right, good morning. Welcome to Christ Church. Church while lifting lives, elevating Christ to church for those who aren't here yet. I'm Pastor Andrew, and I'm glad that you're here now as we worship together in the East Auditorium. It's great to be with you. Maybe you're joining us in West. Maybe you're joining us online. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being part of our community. Thanks for being part of Christ Church and the significance of what that means. I am really particularly excited as we do kick off a new sermon series uh, today that will carry us up until Easter. Uh, this is good. These are uh, an incredibly important time in the church calendar where Christians throughout the very beginning, since the beginning of the Christian movement, have been setting aside certain seasons for a special measure of um, devotion and clarity and focus in our lives. And it's a tradition that's been handed down from generation to generation. And we continue to practice it as a church body as well. It's sometimes referred to as Lent. It's this journey, this spiritual journey to Easter that uh, is really significant and really meaningful. And we have a new sermon series to guide us through that particular season as a church body. I just got the chance, I just wrapped up worshiping with our 8 o'clock uh, service. I don't know if you know this, but there was actually a service earlier than 9. There is an 8 o'clock service. If you uh, want to grab a cup of coffee and come early to the 8 o'clock service, we'd love to have you come and join us someday. Uh, it's in our chapel, and it is a service where we embrace our heritage, where we are steeped in hymns and liturgy, and we do things like the Apostles' Creed. This morning we sing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, if you know that one. Oh, warms my heart, right? And it's this incredible space where we do learn about and continue some of the traditions that have been handed down to us from generation to generation. And it's a way to link us into the past past. Uh, it's bridging the future and the past and bringing them together. And believe it or not, Christ Church has a very rich past. Christ Church began in 1966. If you are new to Christ Church, you're going to get a snapshot of, of history review for you uh, this morning. Christ Church began when a group of faithful people, of Christian people, gathered together and they identified the community and, and the houses and the people of Mequon and said, Jesus needs to be present here. There needs to be a tangible expression of the kingdom of God here. And so they started Christ Church in 1966. Here's some pictures for you. Throwback. Aren't these awesome? I was so excited finding these. This is in the top, uh, top corner. You can see actually um, this is them building the very first building. Uh, for a while, they met uh, at uh, Concordia University. Before then, it was, a, uh, at that time, a Catholic nunnery. And uh, uh, they raised funds, and they felt called to do this. They met there. Concordia was gracious enough to allow that. And then they, they built themselves uh, their first facility, their first site. Um, and you can see that since the very beginning, things like family and youth have been an important part of Christ Church. You see some of that. You see fellowship, and you see small group. You see uh, people gathering in relationship. Now, I won't go into the detail of who's who, but some of these faces are still around. Is that amazing or, or what? Yes, you know, some of the hair has changed. There might be less hair. Uh, some of the hair might be a little whiter, and certainly the clothes might look a little different, but some of the beauty here is that Christ Church has been around since 1966 as a group of disciples, of Christ followers, had the same heart and the same mission, and they decided to plant Christ Church. Throughout time, that, that began to evolve and grow, and there was a lot of change as things happened over time. The new facility was built, and then all sorts of things happened uh, as, as new people and new members and things like that. I just want to highlight this handsome teenager right there. Wow, that is a sharp-looking guy right there. But anyways, uh, these pictures help convey for you a, a sense of, wow, Christ Church has been through a lot over these years as we've ministered and as we've worked, as we've played, and as we've shared Jesus Christ with our larger community. In 2009, we built the first edition that we have for what we sometimes refer to as Phase 1, and then uh, it really, Christ Church really had a, a new, new season upon its life, and it grew rapidly since 100 and so, 130 people took a huge step of faith, raised a lot of resources, and invested and prayed over the land that, they, that we purchased, that we currently have our facility on. They built phase one, and uh, Christ Church has never been the same, certainly since, in terms of its makeup and how it, how it feels and so forth. But, but just wonderful testimony to faithful people throughout time. Now, I've had the privilege of being with you over the last 10 years, specifically in the pastoral capacity. Um, I, I am actually a son of the congregation. I've been part of Christ Church. I was raised in Christ Church. My faith is hugely shaped by this church body, by you. 
And I am grateful for that. And specifically, I went away for a number of years, was educated, and then, then you called me back as your pastor 10 years ago. And so I've been on the pastoral team of the last 10 years. And over the last 10 years alone, there's been a whole lot more changes as things continue to evolve and continue to grow. I was reflecting on just since the time that I've been in the pastoral capacity, here are some of the things that I've been a part of, and that is a constitution and governance 10 years ago, uh, actually over 10 years ago, about 12 years ago, the Christ Church began the process of reexamining our constitution and our governance and what we do and how we we do it to bring it up to speed with, with what are most effective practices, that actually had to get uh, put on pause. We are only now returning to reexamining and updating our Constitution. And the reason it had to get put on pause is because uh, Christ Church was growing so much. Uh, it was fabulous. It was incredible. And, and God's, God was on the move. And so uh, we put it on pause as we began to put our energy into a phase two expansion, which is our current facility and our current site. Uh, if you're worshiping in East, if you are traversing the atrium at all, if you stop in our chapel, if you had a coffee in the cafe, <clears throat> excuse me, that's all part of the phase two expansion experience that was completed in 2019, which was right before 2020. 2020, there was some more change. Uh, as we all collectively as a community had to navigate the reality of COVID and what that meant, however, God's spirit was out in front of us as a church body. We had just invested a whole new set of technology and streaming capacities, uh, and so we were actually incredibly well positioned to navigate COVID as a church body. Coming out of COVID and as COVID continued to, to shake out and so forth, we as a church body went through another major change, and that is a pastoral transition. Uh, we went and began a three-year process by which the previous pastor, Pastor Bob, who was the lead pastor for over 20 years, um, is now Pastor Emeritus officially as of this last January. He's completely retired. He is currently on a cruise right now. Hope he's having fun. But in addition to that, we also brought on and have seen from within our own uh, context uh, new voices and new people and new leadership being raised up. This last year, about a year ago, uh, a little less than we ordained Pastor Mike, who completed his seminary training. We have a number of others who are currently in seminary, and so Pastor Mike um, moved from vicar to a pastoral capacity. And so we've been through a lot, people. Just in the last 10 years, we've seen incredible and amazing new change. Perhaps the most exciting change for me has been the new people and the new stories. Getting to know the new faces, if you are new to Christ Church in the last few years, maybe this is your very first time coming to Christ Church. If that's the case, I am thrilled that you are here. And I am so excited that you, you, you are checking out Christ Church and you're, you're trying to understand a little bit about maybe hopefully this whole Christ thing in addition to Christ Church. There have been an amazing amount of, of new people with incredible stories and, and specifically all of us have God stories. Stories of how God has been at work and moving in our church, at work and moving in our individual lives and in the world at large. There has been a lot of change since 1966. And yet, some things don't change. For as much change and the new hairdos and there might be new instruments and things like that, there are other things that haven't changed. And that is the heart of Christ church, the heart of our God, the, the Word, the Bible, and the urgency to bring the good news of Jesus Christ into more lives, that has not changed. The mission and the desire to know Christ and make Him known that has not changed. A number of years ago, we slapped a, a slogan on a t-shirt, I am Christ Church. And for whatever reasons, this is something that hasn't changed. It's stuck with us. It's something that somehow captures the essence of Christ Church going all the way back to those first Christians and those first disciples who said more people need to know Jesus and need to be in the Scriptures and need to know the experience of worship and the, the glory of the Gospel and the God who is at work in our world. Those same disciples who were Christ Church then, we are Christ Church now with that same ethos, that same heart, that same desire, and that same mission. I am Christ Church today is what this slogan means. And we slapped it on a t-shirt and it hasn't gone away because our God has not gone away. And His mission and this church has prevailed.
When we say I am Christ church, we're talking about the, the mission of who we are and what God has called us specifically as this church body to be about. When we say that phrase that I am Christ church, we're talking about what we believe, the significance of, of what it is that when we gather together, we do communion, that we baptize, we bring people under the water and we raise them to new life. We talk about the significance of the scriptures and the Bible and the way in which it influences and forms us and shapes us and challenges us and grows us and breathes life into us. We talk about what we believe about God the Father, God the Spirit, and God the Son. When we say that phrase, I am Christ church, we're talking about the way that our faith issues into faithfulness and how we live and and the practices and the disciplines and the ways in which we embody and live out our faith as the people of God, as the disciples of today. To be a disciple is to be a learner, to be a grower, to be someone who is chasing after their teacher and master, seeking to put into practice the the, the teachings that their master has given unto them. And so disciple is a word that has always been deeply rooted within the Christian faith, going back to Jesus and the original disciples, the learners and the growers who were striving to become the people that God wanted them to be in that day. When we say, I am Christ church, we are claiming that same identity in this day. It's a powerful phrase, people. And it has meaning and significance, I hope, for you. About a year ago, the pastors and the pastoral team, our vicars and our pastors, go away every year for a brief retreat. And it's time of prayer. It's a time of planning. We give you a look under the hood. We actually go away and we plan with great intentionality the, the sermon content for the entire year, what we feel like God is asking and calling us to address, given the spiritual temperament of our church body. What is it that God is asking us to think about and study, and where in the Bible is he leading us? And so we get together to pray. We get together to plan. We get together and we walk, and we talk about theologies. We enjoy pizza and maybe a couple two tree adult beverages, And we are German Lutheran pastors, after all. But most importantly, we spend time in the Spirit together. And and this last year, as we were reflecting, we were reflecting about what God has given us and what God has entrusted to us, most namely and most specifically our mission, that we are a church about lifting lives, elevating Christ. We are a church for those who are not here yet. And the hope is that you will hear that every single Sunday. In fact, every time we begin preaching the word, we always set it up by reminding us as a church body what God has called us to be and who God has called us to be in that mission. It's literally on the wall. And we are so thankful for it. And we reflected about our theology and the gift of our heritage and the significance of what we believe, things like the sacraments, things like the Bible, We committed that every three, two to three years, we were actually going to preach through a set of the basics of the faith. It's already underway. You may not even know it yet, but you've already gotten installments in it. The Theology 101, the basics of our faith, what we believe is a church body. So that it continues to remain in front of us, the significance and essence of what we believe as God's people today. But of everything that we talked about, of everything that we spent time on, specifically a year ago, we spent the most time talking about today and the next few weeks about what it is to receive the legacy of the disciples going back to 1966 and all the way back to Jesus. And to ask the question of what does it look like to be the disciple today? The learner, the grower, someone who is in process, the Christian, the Christ church person who is boldly wearing the shirt that says, I am Christ church. What do we mean in how we live our lives as God's people today? That's what we spent the most time on. 
And it's because when we use that phrase, I am Christ Church, it's more than simply branding, okay? Though it does work that way. So please stop by the swag shop and buy some online. Let's flood the city people with those shirts. Absolutely. In fact, so you know they work. This last December, I wore a shirt, I am Christ Church, and I walked up to a coffee joint and I got a, I got a coffee from the barista and she looked at me after taking my order and she goes, so do you go to Christ Church? <laughs> yeah, I do. You got me. She said, I've heard about that Bethlehem thing you guys do. I thought about bringing my grandson to that. It's coming up, isn't it? I said, absolutely it is. And I invited her and I talked to her. And I told her about our church. And I learned from her that she was hoping to pass on her Christian faith to her grandson. And I hope she came. I hope they both did. So this is more than just simply branding. So don't be afraid to wear and bear the message of who you are as a church body out into the world because that's part of who we are and called to do. We'll be talking more about that this series. But this phrase speaks more to branding. It it, it speaks to who we are. And perhaps you've heard the phrase whose we are. It is a phrase that speaks to who we are striving to be, who we are in process of becoming. As we live towards becoming the person, the people, the church, God desires, designed, and called us to be. So over the next number of weeks, we are going to boldly be saying, I am Christ's church. And this is how I choose to live my life as a member of this church, as a disciple today. The goal of these next weeks is to paint a picture for you of the Christian life, the full, rich Christian life that is possible for you. It's to help you get a sense for what we mean when we talk about being a disciple of Jesus Christ or being a follower of Jesus Christ, living and and adhering to the ways of Jesus Christ. In fact, in the very beginning, the Acts, if you go to the book of Acts, we find that the early Christians were actually not called Christians. They were called people of the way. And the hope is that we will discover together and affirm our sense of calling and what that means to to live Jesus' way of life, the Christian life. We're going to examine how we live as the followers and disciples of Jesus in this day. To understand that very quickly, we need to go back to the beginning. I hear it's a very good place to go and a good place to begin. Since Christianity, and therefore Christ Church, begins with Christ, Christianity begins with Christ, so also this conversation has to be grounded and begin from a perspective of Christ. What Christ has done is doing for you, to you, You have to discover, you have to understand, we've got to begin. We need to stop and begin this conversation in its appropriate location, which is to acknowledge that what Christ has done for you precedes the possibility of what Christ could do through you. Which is why the last two weeks were so important and so good. If you missed the last two weeks, I beg you, I implore you, please go back and listen online. Vicar Nathan brought the word and the word was good. It was so powerful because very specifically in the last two weeks, Vicar Nathan spoke to us about holiness, our holy God. And the way in which that holy God has chosen to look upon our broken, messy, and impure world. And the fancy term is impute, give unto. Take his holiness and actually give it unto you. That he makes you holy. Jesus, in his life, death, and resurrection chooses to make you holy. That's where this begins. 
not in what we have done for God, but what God has done for us in the person of Jesus Christ, that he looked upon you with your pain, your suffering, your discomfort, your challenges, your issues. He looked upon this world with its chaos, its turmoil. And he chose to love and forgive and make you holy. This is the essence of what we, we in the theological world call our atonement theory. How you are made right with God. It's not because what have you have done, but what God has done for you in the person of Jesus. The book of Hebrews is another book of the Bible that talks about clothing ourselves with the person of Jesus Christ. What happens is that Jesus takes off his identity and he wraps it around you. His righteousness, his love, his dignity, his integrity, his relationship to the Godhead, the Father. So that when the God Almighty looks upon you, the Father sees you. He sees you clothed in the person and the identity and the holiness of Jesus Christ. And he says, ha, huh, that's my kid right there. He looks at you and he says, that is my beloved child with whom I am well pleased. We find that in the Gospels. It is not what we do that makes us a Christian, but rather what Christ has done for you that makes you a Christian. And the entire redemptive narrative of the Bible points to this very succinctly. We can go to Ephesians. This is one of the best encapsulations of the gospel. And this is one of those verses or stories you want to highlight, underline, you want to get it as a tattoo, you want to put this in the, you know, the card and carry it around with you. It's like that level, okay? Here's what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians. God saved you. God saved you. He saved you by his grace when you believed in the life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ and the fact that he has claimed you as his child that he has made you holy. God saved you by his grace when you believed. You can't take credit for it. It's not something that you can puff up your chest and say, I did this. This is not, not based on us, our actions, our works. It is strictly a free gift from God. Salvation, right, right, right relationship with God, it's not a reward for the good things we've done. I hope you've done the good things, but you don't get into heaven, you don't get into right relationship with God by helping the little old lady across the street. It's not how this works. This is the case so that none of us can boast or puff ourselves up in terms of what we have accomplished and try to find meaning and success within our own definition of who we are so that we can, and this is what we do, right? We puff ourselves up out in the world all the time. In our brokenness, we can succumb to looking at ourselves and trying to prove our worth when God has already looked at you and said, you matter to me. I love you, I forgive you, and you are my child. For we are God's masterpiece. This whole redemptive story and the way that he has made you, the way he has claimed you, you are his masterpiece and as much as we seek to paint the full christian life for you over these next couple weeks it's because it's done in light of the fact that god has already made you and claimed you and done miraculous wonderful things in this world for you so much so that he has claimed you as his masterpiece he's created you anew in christ jesus so that we can do the good things he has made you new as a new person the old is gone, the new has come, and as a new person, you now get to do the good things that God planned, purposed, and intended since the very beginning of creation for you and for all of humanity. You get to live into the purpose for which God created humanity. Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ. Christ makes the Christian and he has called you and he has set you free. The book of Galatians talks about freedom, saying you are free. 
And it is for freedom that you have been set free. The question then becomes, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? How are you going to live? How are you going to live out your life in light of the reality that you have been claimed as a child of God and been given a new life, a new identity? How will you live? That's what we examine these weeks. Option one is to be a Christian in name only. It's to distance ourselves from the purpose that God intended for us as humanity and say, nah, thanks for calling me a child, but I got my own plans and I'm going my own way and I'm going to live life according to what I think is best. I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of people in the world choosing to live life according to how they think life should be lived and according to what they think is best. And it's precisely why the world is as messed up as it is. I vote for option two. That we begin to dive into the God's word and God's purposes for humanity. We begin to seek after God's heart and we begin to actually allow that to usher forward in our actions and do the good things. To live our lives according to and towards that we begin to strive toward and become more fully the people that God hoped and desired that we would be. That we would be disciples. Chasing after the way of Jesus. That we could be the disciples of today. And live our lives based on what God wants for us. And in light of what he's done for us. Make no mistake, these next couple weeks are going to be a call to action. There's a sense of responsibility of taking up a mantle here that as the disciples of 1966 began Christ Church, so also today we need to recognize that we are disciples today and it has been entrusted, Christ Church has been entrusted to you so that we could do the good things that so long ago they did and living into the mission and the vision for what God desires for us. Over these next couple of weeks, I'm going to invite you to embrace various disciplines, habits, practices, so that when people look at you, they know that something's different about you, and it creates space for the kingdom of God to be realized and tangible. Because for as much as Christ makes a Christian, it is the disciplines and how we live that differentiates us and helps us be established as disciples. This fancy word discipleship has been thrown around tons of Christian congregations. If you've ever heard of it before, it's, it, it's deeply tied to our Christian lineage and heritage. And what we're going to do over these next couple of weeks is talk about our discipleship, how we live as we become the people God wants us to be in this day and age. We've identified five specific word choices, and these are the things that we're going to talk about over the next couple weeks. These are the things, if you're in an Easter group, you're going to be unpacking. If you're not in an Easter group, get in an Easter group so you can unpack these. Show up over the next five weeks. If you're going on vacation, no big deal. Tune in online. We have an incredible team that's always constantly there, slaving and working hard to make that possible for you. But be here so that we can together discover and understand what it means when we say, I am Christ Church. Not only in our sense of mission, not only in what we believe and, and confess, but also in how we live as God's church in this day, as Christ Church in this day. I'll give you a teaser. You can already stop by the wheel that's out in the atrium out there uh, and spin the wheel. It's going to be out there all series long, and it's going to be ways that we challenge you and invite you to take a step of faith and begin to adopt some practices that we've identified. You can find out more information by going out there this, uh, today if you're here on site, whether you're in west or east. And if you're not in an Easter group, there's a chance for you to take a step. There's still time to sign up because these things are so important. We want you to be in conversation around these things. So I invite you to take that step as well. For the moment, I'm going to leave you in suspense. I'm going to invite you back next week, and we will begin to unpack the significant life that we can live, you can live, in light 
of what Christ has already done for you. With that said, please pray with me. Jesus, I worship you and praise you for what you have done for us as a church. Specifically that in 1966 you would gather a group of people together to begin a church. A church with your heart and your vision and your mission at its center and core. And that throughout the ages and the decades, that which is most important has not changed. Your gospel, your good news, what we believe in, in who you are and what you have done for us. Thank you. We pray that as we continue to study, as we continue to dive into this particular season, you would lead us in better understanding how our, our faith ushers into faithfulness. How the disciplines of a healthy, good, full Christian life invite us into deeper relationship, into more fully becoming a disciple of yours. I pray and ask that those of us who, who feel that deep resonance today, who, who, who can stand up and say, yes, I am Christ Church, would bear forward their mission and the vision that, that you have for them in their life. That your kingdom would grow and that your name would be made known. We thank you that we are able to do this not because of our own strength, our own ability, but only as new creations claimed by your grace. Help us become the children you desire and designed us to be. We pray this, Jesus, in your name.